Google it, Google it, Google it, Google it, Google it. Ian uh, Halpern uh, cannot call in today, unfortunately. Oh, he usually boy. calls once a week, but he cannot call in today. So instead, we're going to have this guy uh, Rocco calling in. Mm. Rocco Lourdes? Yes. Rocco Lourdes will be calling ah. in instead of Ian Halpern today. Uh, unfortunately, we don't get Ian this week. We get Rocco Lourdes. Oh, okay. All right. And um, he's going to be talking to um, somebody that swears that big stars are using, like, uh, dating sites to get, like, you know, real mates because they're oh, yeah? sick of the Hollywood scene. And this person, really? this person is saying, I don't know if it's true, that Jennifer Aniston uses this service. Oh, boy. Because she's, uh, she's had it with all the men in Hollywood, and now she just wants a regular Joe. Oh, good luck. So this good guy, Rocco Lourdes, will be calling in today. And uh, we're going to conference him in with mm. this uh, this woman, Amber. All right. That uh, sets up big, big stars with regular people. Looking forward to that. So we got this uh, Rocco guy calling in. Yes. Is this Rocco? Let me say hi to Rocco. Rocco. Uh, yeah, good morning, everybody. Thank you so much. Uh, I, I'm glad. You know, I'm a very shy guy, and I, I really need your help to get me the right woman. And... Uh, I feel I could do it with your help. Thank you so much. Uh, no problem, Rocco. So uh, we're we're gonna have you on the phone with uh, an agency that that helps uh, what match people up. Yeah, well, you know, uh, my my dream is to uh, date a celebrity, and uh, this woman, she she has all these celebrities, and uh, I think we, we I'm very shy, but if you could help me, I have lots of money. Do it. Do it. I give her all my money, no, but I need to date a celebrity. Yeah. All right, so what, I think we got Amber on the line as well, and Amber's going to help you get a date, Rocco? Yeah, Amber. Hold on, let me get Amber on the line here. All right, uh, let's say hi to Amber. Welcome to the show. How are you? I'm great. How are you this morning? Well, could you? Uh, I know all about you, but could you explain to the people that are listening to our show what um, what you do? Well, I am uh, the co-owner of a company called Kelleher International, and it's actually my mother, Jill Kelleher, that founded us 24 years ago. And we are uh, a matchmaking firm, actually the, the largest matchmaking firm in the country. So we're in New York in the tri-state area. We're all over uh, the country as well as overseas, and we work for people that are usually pretty busy, uh, very particular, want to get married. No, it's not a dating service, so this is like an executive search firm when you really are ready to find the one. Great. And uh, do you have a specialty? Uh, do you focus on uh, celebrities or anything like that? or what's? Well, we've, we've been working with celebrities for a long time. My background's in the film and entertainment business, so when I opened up our Los Angeles office in the 90s, I was already working with, with a lot of people in the business. So celebrities and also people in the industry, the entertainment business, so they might be a producer, maybe not, you know, the, uh, well, of course, A-list actors were known for that, but we also work with the, the biggest producers in, in, in film and in music and in tech and all of that, so they're celebrities in their own fields. Okay. Well, with that said, we got Rocco on the line. Uh, Rocco? Uh, yeah. Hi, Rocco. Wait, Amber, you know Rocco? I've spoken to him before, yes. Yes. Uh, Rocco? Yeah. Uh, Amber, uh, nice. Thank you so much. Look, I, 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 I have money. You know, I own a trash company in the New York area. I have lots of money. I, I'm very shy. I want to meet somebody who is maybe famous. I heard maybe you have, like, Denise Richards. Is, is Denise Richards with you? Well, Rocco, you know, I'm, I'm definitely not going to be able to reveal who my clients are, but we do have Hollywood stars, and um, are you in the sanitation business, I like to say, rather than the trash business? I actually have a couple clients in the sanitation business, so I, I know it's quite a lucrative industry you're in there. Yeah, I, I, help me out. I'm very shy. I don't have a lot of confidence, and, you know, I don't know how to flirt. It's not really my milk and butter. But <laughs> what I need really is uh, I have money. I, I want to meet somebody who's very, uh, very sensual, very smart. Uh, do you, do you, what, could you put me in 
how do I do this? Okay, well, first of all, if you're shy, that's fine, because, um, you know, we're the go-between. I'm going to go out, and uh, we would personally meet and interview everybody that we have in mind for you, okay? So you don't have to worry about blind dates. You're going to be matched with them because of who you are. And, and obviously, I appreciate that you have money, but you really do have to pass our interview process, regardless of how much money you have. So, um, you know, I mean, why don't... Uh, you're certainly invited to come out and meet with me. Um, and the but way that uh, how soon can we do this? Because I, you know, I'm very shy. I I, I need to do this soon. Uh, when can we meet? And how soon will I go out on the dates? Well, as soon as you want to fly out and meet with me, I'd be more than happy to sit down. It takes about an hour or two. I need to know who you are, and of course, we talk about who it is that you're looking for, whether it's an a list celebrity. It really depends on if it's a match, Rocco. Because obviously, if if somebody that I have, you know. They have to be equally as interested in you because it, no. it is matchmaking. So as soon as you can, you know, as soon as you come out, I'm not going to reveal who my clients are. But if you pass my interview, but give me a couple of names. Give me, give me a couple of names because I, 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 I want to meet with you on uh, Friday, and I want to go out next week. But give me a couple of names, please. Well, a couple of names of who I would introduce you to, or a couple of names that we've been credited in the press for. for yeah, having. give me some names, please. Uh, so I. Well, I but don't if you go to our time. website at Kelleher International, you'll see everyone from David Spade to Jennifer Aniston to Denise Richards to Hoda Copy to uh, Paula Abdul. I mean, we're credited in the press for having a tremendous Abdul? amount of people, have but you that doesn't mean Abdul? necessarily they're going to meet you. Have you met Paula Abdul? I, I know Paula. Yes, I do. I, I think Paula's great. And do you think Jennifer Aniston that I'm her type? I don't know if you're her type, but I also don't comment on 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 Jennifer. I, there's there's a few there's a few people that have been credited in the press that I really have no comment for, and she she's she's one of them. Could we meet tomorrow? I fly yeah, out absolutely. tomorrow. We start next week. Well, as soon as you fly out, I'll be more than happy to sit down with you. I would love to learn more about you. You you are definitely sound like an interesting character. And how, how much money do I have to bring? Well, our fees range. So, I mean, it, they're totally across the board. They start at 15000 and they go on up to six figures. We're in Stockholm, we're in London, we're across the country. It just depends on how wide of a net you want me to cast, how how many people you want to meet. Again, it's not well, a good I, I don't mind. You know, I, I, I have no one in my life. I, I don't mind spending money, but I need results. Okay, well... We're, we're good at results. And, and Rocco, you really want uh, a famous person, right? Yes, I, I need to go out. It's my dream. Well, you, have to, you, you can't say the trash business. I mean, the sanitation business is fine, but you're not going to get an A-list actor to go out with you if you if you describe your business. And and, and what do you mean by go out, Amber? Is this, uh, I mean, is there some <laughs> escort? Is there some yeah, of that uh, hanky panky going you, on? Did Jimmy yeah, fart or is it the, the call? For, for <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, Something start. stinks. Drinks perhaps before dinner. Obviously, you talk on the phone beforehand. Yeah. Um, but the people really trust us because we're the, we're, we really vet. We personally meet, we vet, we screen everybody. And the whole point is so that they don't waste their time. I've got rock and roll stars that are on tour that really, truly want to meet someone. If they wanted to go on a date, they could date one of their groupies. But instead, they're going to have a cup of tea with somebody that actually has a, an intellect that they can have a conversation with. Amber, I have a question for you. Um, sure. this, it's, when you what's the difference between, say, a $15,000 uh, payment and uh, say a hundred six figures, a hundred thousand dollars. What, what is it? The level of people, or is it? Uh, what, what? It's, it's completely how we work for you. Fifteen thousand would be like a tri-state local membership. Let's say you are a woman and um, and you work for a, a company right there in Manhattan, and and you're and the guy's an author or owns a publishing company. It would be a perfect match because you're both in Manhattan. But if but if Rocco, for example, he he says he really wants to meet somebody, he's got all his sure. money. He man of a half a voice. He has an elite <laughs> client. That's a six figure. It's all the offices nationwide, as, as well as overseas. Bring There's back just Stephen no Whistler for some excitement. Yeah. But also, yeah. now if I, uh, but what if you don't make a lot of money? If you don't make a lot of money and you still want to be part of the group, then then, then we, we screen you. It's usually not in person until we're ready to actually match you. But if you're a woman listening to the show or a man listening and, and you're like, well, I don't have that kind of cash, but I'm really serious, you just submit yourself on the Internet. Um, uh, and we keep we have over 10,000 files. And so, you know, right, right. we're not is, working for 10,000 people. And, and this isn't prostitution, right, Amber? It sounds very uh, no, suspicious. Very if, suspicious. If somebody wants to do that, they yeah. can pay 19 bucks on Match.com. and. Sure. 
right? Yeah. With me, I'm going to know everything about them, and it's not worth the money and the time right and the effort. Uh, Amber, what what about? I I need to learn how to <laughs> flirt. And what, what? And tell me, the men. What well, you need the right you, you women. You're not going to need to learn how to flirt. It's just going to be natural. Someone told me the uh, owner of the Boston Red Sox is a client. Is that true? Again, I'm not going to reveal who my clients are, but that did come out in page six. That did come out in page oh, six. Oh, it did. And yeah. what about in page yeah. six? Just, what do those liars say? This is page six. Yeah, trust me, they're fucking liars. So what did those fucking liars <laughs> say? Um, it, uh, the, the owner of the Boston Red Sox was, was spotted with, with the producer of Oprah, and, and everyone knows that I'm close with both of them and, and that that would probably be a, a, a match that I would put together. That's a perfect example of the caliber of people. Right. I mean, here, you know, these, these people don't need anybody to help them date, but yet they probably wouldn't meet without somebody like myself being able to facilitate a match between a businesswoman in Chicago and, and somebody that's back and forth from L.A. to, to, to Boston. I mean, that, that's what it's all about. These are the people that are mm -hmm. the highest in their field, and they want to meet somebody outside of their circle. An A-list actress yeah. isn't going to meet an entrepreneur unless oh, yeah. somehow, some way, yeah. somebody's going to introduce yeah. them. But uh, my, my uh, 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 are, are they lonely, Amber? <laughs> the, the, uh, the celebrities, are they lonely? Of course. Everybody is if you're not in love. Unless, unless you really, truly aren't in the right state of mind okay. to meet someone, because I believe I, that being alone is fine. Yeah, uh, I, Rocco, I got to put you on the on hold for one second. We got um, we got a guy named Paul on the line. Uh, hold on, Rocco, please. Amber, stay there, please. Okay. This guy uh, has a very good uh, uh, question. Paul uh, Paul Hargis. Hi, Paul. Hi. Is this Amber? Oh uh, yes. Hi, Paul. Hi, how are you? Okay. I'm, I, I'm known as Uncle Paul. I have kind of a children's show I do. And I've been looking to meet someone to date for a while, but I'm an average, I'm 57 years young. Okay, I like that. <laughs> and I want to meet somebody to go out with, you know. Especially... Are you looking for a relationship or just someone to go out with? I are think a relationship. I think for a relationship? relationship because I really have had a lot of misunderstandings and things of that nature. So I would like to have like a special someone, but I don't know how to go about doing it because the police keep coming. The police keep coming. Well, uh, but now, what do I have to do to show? meet? The, what's that? What is it that you're doing that is drawing the police attention? Oh, I don't know. It's just a whole persecution thing. So do you hook up people from different, like, religious backgrounds and age groups, things of that nature? Uh, of course, matchmaking always looks at religion. We look at background, education, how old you are. Uh, we also I'm 57 years <laughs> Hey, Amber, I, I think what Paul's getting at, he, he's looking for a younger uh, a younger yeah, date. Yeah, you know, a little you, younger. You know how Amber, the older women, gentlemen like uh, younger uh, women? Women uh, in my age. I've, I've heard of that. Oh, I've heard of that. Um, well, Paul, per perhaps maybe you could try um, some... Oh, God, I didn't get finished explaining. Oh, I'm sorry. Please finish. Somebody in my age group doesn't understand me. I'm 57 years young. I want somebody who's who's much younger, who's youthful, has a, a fun outlook on life. But I feel that everybody I meet's a bunch of old ladies. Well, I don't like women to be that old. They don't understand fun. Okay, well, I'm sorry about that. Uh, what's I that? Think that there's Why are you laughing women. at me? Well, I think that there's plenty of women that are chronologically more mature, but emotionally they're still kids, and I think that you Yay. just need somebody to help you find them. <laughs> Paul. I like that because yeah. I like to go out and have fun and go to the park and roll a ball and do things of that nature. I have a, I have a I'm not done it. saying nothing. Okay, you can go ahead and finish. I just want somebody who's youthful. Got it. And it's very hard to find because nobody understands. Well, I think there'd be plenty of people that understand. I have an entrepreneur who's in his 60s, and one of the things that he does on his spare time is he flies his jets to the different roller coasters. Ah, he country. plays for the jets? Does he what? He plays for the New York Jets? No, he flies his jets to the, all the different uh, parks around the country and goes on all the roller coasters. I don't fly no planes. 
My wife died the fire. From we a were plane? estranged. How long ago? a big ago? insurance settlement. What's that? How long ago? Two weeks. <laughs> uh, we Amber. estranged for a while. I, yeah. We were separated Are you going to rescue long, me? Long, long... <laughs> No, I don't know why you're laughing. This is this is real. That's that's why we put Paul on the on the line. He My lost his wife two weeks away, ago. But we were separated for five or six years. Okay, before she passed away in the fire. She no, the fire happened a while ago. She passed away about two weeks ago. But the fire happened about I'd say three months ago, maybe three and a half months. And the fire had something to do with the plane. No, I don't. What are you talking about? That's the other man. That's the other man. You're humiliating me. I see. Okay, well, how do you have a, Would you like to ask me a specific question that maybe I can help you answer? Are you looking to have somebody help you find oh, this elusive woman? Huh? Are you, would you like help finding this elusive woman? Yeah, a girl. Okay, and where do you live? What's that? Where do you live? I live in uh, Nantucket. In Nantucket? Okay, okay. Well, I'm sure that I could give you uh, a phone number off the air if you'd like, and we could perhaps set up a personal meeting. Could but you get me somebody who will – because the law says that people shouldn't be together at certain ages. I don't agree. Well, my, my women that are young, uh, they've got it pr it pretty much together. They have their careers, and they're not really looking for – Careers? Anybody to take care of them financially. Do you so have any students? No, I don't work with students. Most of the women start around 25, 26 on up. Oh, that's sometimes, no sometimes that's they're younger, too old. they're going to be looking for men that are probably with I can't hear you. Days. You keep talking over me. That's way too old. <laughs> I'm, well, I'm not kidding. No, I believe you, but that's why I think perhaps maybe you should try online dating because you can... You can I tried the chat rooms. Half the time it's not even the people they say they are. Yeah, I know. That's the problem. There's a lot of mis representation. God damn FBI. Well, what would you like me to do, Paul? Huh? What would you like me to do for you? Find me somebody who's compatible, who likes an older gentleman. Well, one of the things that you could do is send me some pictures of some of the women that you've dated in the past. Every time I do that, I get in trouble. Well, I might not be the right service for you, but I'd like to help you out. Did you give somebody a phone number? I don't mean to interrupt your calls, but I've really been struggling well, have being single for all these remember. What? I have an easy number for you to remember. What's the number? It's 1-800-401-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-
Well, the, thank you, Rocco. Yeah, this part thank is you. like the end of the roller yes. coaster ride. Yes. All right. Uh, <laughs> and, and Amber, thank you so much. That was. Well, yeah, you guys, it's great to be on your show. I oh, fantastic. Maybe Rocco can report back what he thinks about his yeah. lunches. Sure. Thanks for that exclusive. All right. You're welcome. All right. Have a great day, you guys. All right. Thank you. Bye. Hey, uh, this is strange. We just uh, got rid of uh, Amber, and I think. Uh, Ian? Hey, guys. How you doing today? What's up, man? Uh, how are you? Yeah. It's it's early in the morning here, man. It's like six o'clock in the morning. Yeah, you just woke up. Uh, no, I've been up since four. It sounds oh, like you're I'm a little working, tired right now. Did... I'm working on a new book, and I got deadlines and a film, and uh, yeah. everything's cool, man. Well, we had some guy uh, Rocco on the phone. Man, uh, I, I, that's what a get what great way to get to Jennifer Aniston. What, why you say that? Well, apparently she's if if she really is a client. You know, I think uh, Opie should sign up and uh, and really smell the coffee. <laughs> yeah, you do, huh? So, so what? You could date uh, Jennifer Aniston? I, I guess so, man. I guess cash scream. Look, the bottom line here is they're all bored of uh, celebrities. I can't yeah. blame them. Celebrities are airheads. We all know that. And it sounds to me as if celebrities they want to meet people who are more solid so you want hollywood looks <laughs> right. but with a harvard brain <laughs> right and and they're willing to pay for it look you know cash screams man like i don't pay for any of this no. stuff steve says yeah. i wish he'd wake up and no, i have women right now from the inside the windows man <laughs> women are trying to get to me all the time he's but, killing uh, you know jill nicolini me yeah well, anthony yeah. and i have something yeah. in common for life women jill nicolini pussy of google course. google everybody. google google yeah. Yeah. everybody google, look, I did. Google. Google. With Google. all due respect. With all due man, respect. Man, so With everybody, I'm Google. taking my leftovers. Google. All right. Listen, Google. now, Ian, what do you got on John Mayer? Please. I didn't yeah, think we were going to talk to you today, but why, why, not we, why don't we do this? Yeah. Look, seriously, John Mayer, he gives an interview to Playboy. Yeah. He claims that blacks love him, and then he, he uses the N-word. I mean, you know, the, the bottom line there is John Mayer's a thief because I'm telling you from a musician standpoint. You're a musician too. Yeah, I, I'm a world class saxophone. Google, 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 Google. I've toured the world. I've toured doing the world what? Saxophone. The world I could, and blow, I could blow Mayer under the table in oh, a heartbeat. Blow Mayer. <laughs> okay, I can blow <laughs> Mayer under the table. <laughs> wow. That, <laughs> you know, uh, that was Mayer, a little too close for a comfort thief, there, Ian. He's trying to be John Lee Hooker, Jimi Hendrix, yeah. none of the above. Right. Then he has the audacity to use the N-word. I'm calling on your show today for a blacklist of John Mayer's music. Wow. I think we should... Um, I think we get that done, huh? I think this guy... You know, I've <laughs> never bought a Mayer record. Have you bought one of his records? No, I listen no. to him here and there, though. They're, they're pretty good. It, it, have you they play pretty good. Seriously, dude. Have you ever made love to John Mayer's music? No, Ian. I never fucked to any music. Yeah. It's usually you know, iced tea, usually. <laughs> John Mayer is a has-been. He's trying to get more publicity by going into Playboy, using the N-word. He says that he's like one of the only musicians who can hang with the hood, with Snoop Dogg, with all these rappers. He, he's just, his career's over. People are tired no. of John Mayer. The second Aniston dumped him, it was all over. Is it true and, that Aniston dumped him? Because I, I think it looked like he might have moved on from her. That's yeah. what he, he spun that. I'm uh, telling you right now, Aniston yeah. dumped him in a heartbeat. She just used him to go to the Oscars, and then it was over. But, man, hold on. You, guys say, man, you can't say Mayor's career is done. He's on the cover of Rolling Stone. And I don't think he look. He, he maybe he shouldn't have said nigger in an interview. It's not the smartest thing to say. Well, what was the context? It was it was somebody had said, and again I don't know exactly. Someone had said to him, "You kind of have a, a uh, has a feel to have." Was it a ghetto pass? Hood pass. A hood, a hood pass. pass. Yeah. Meaning that black artists like him. Okay. And he was saying something like, "Well, they might as well." What did he say? They might as well call it a nigger pass. It was, but he wasn't being like i don't like blacks uh, okay. he was yeah yeah but norton let me tell you, you norton, norton. Yeah. Hold, 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 but, but norton google it i've done my homework on mayor i i know this guy inside <clears throat> out listen there's a pakistani born guy who calls mayor quote unquote a racist and an accidental racist and because uh mayor called him kabul this was in december 2009 called who kabul he called this pakistani born guy uh, Kumail, he called him Kabul, and then he said he looked like a brown guy but sounded like a white guy. That's a, here's, here's the thing. Well, and he, this guy, hey, hold Kumail, on, hold on, no, he hold calls on. 
He I, calls Mayer a racist and an accidental racist. Uh, honestly, John Mayer is a racist. He, he's not. I actually, I, I know he the is guy. A Ian, How I'm telling you. you. Know about racism, man. I know the guy. Google it. You're white. And I'm, I know I'm yeah, white, but white, I also, Jimmy. I also know John fairly yeah. well. And you know he does stand up. Like he has yeah. that mentality. Him making fun of a guy, saying he looks like a brown guy and sounds like a white guy. I mean, there's a lot of times the mayor says things that most musicians probably wouldn't say, but he also gets up on stage, he, and when he performed comedy, he did a pretty rough act. That's kind of his mentality. And, it doesn't and, make him a racist. And he hangs out with fellow uh, comics down at the Comic Cellar, so he's you, picking up on, on that vibe. Yeah, he, you have like, to understand that, and too. And that vibe is where everyone just attacks each other. Everyone's pretty brutal. Nobody yeah. really holds back when they're comedians, yeah. and yeah. that's who John hangs with. It's well, mostly using, comics. If it was... Imus using the N word in Playboy. If it was Opie using the N word in Playboy, uh, wrong guy. If, if it was even you know Joan Rivers, if it was even uh, Barbara Walters using the N word, they'd be toast. They yeah. would never hey, work. Do you understand that? So we're going to let John Mayer get away with this. This is an insult to all the. What are you a communist? Yes. Oh. Everyone what should be able to use the N word. I don't give a shit. What that's you? one of these fucking self-hating white liberal douchebags. What are you, Ian? Uh, you guys got it wrong. Listen, racism is like cancer. You don't know when you have it. And I, 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 what? with all due respect, I love you guys, <laughs> but I'm calling for a boycott of mayors, all his products today. It's silly. I, I, I'm, I know I'm John, and I, to be honest with you, he was a racist. I'd tell you that. Here's the bottom line. I, I mean, no, I, I know the guy. I see him at the comedy show. I see who he hangs with, who's in his close circle. And it's not a bunch of white people. It's a very mixed group. And I see the way he interacts with comedians. And he's being funny and he's being, uh, maybe he says things he shouldn't say. But I guarantee you, a big part of that is the influence of just hanging with comics and the way we don't pull punches with each other. Norton, with all due respect, Norton. Look, it's like O.J. Simpson. Everyone loves O.J. I've hung with O.J. He's the greatest guy. O.J. Simpson's a murderer. John Mayer's a racist. These guys <laughs> do not deserve any time of day, and it's time everyone wakes up. You're out of your fucking mind. How Let me ask you a question. How come you're not calling for a boycott? I mean, John Mayer, again, a guy who said... Who said nigger in the context not of I don't like nigger. It wasn't saying that. That's not no. what he was saying. So to say he's a racist is just kind of purposefully inflammatory. It's almost is that like, like saying Jesse Jackson when he says hi me. Jesse Jackson. How about this? Hi me. Great you example. Great example. I've not, no, no one saw it. He said it to Milton Coleman, a journalist. Uh, and he said it at a breakfast, and Coleman fucking ratted him out. Uh, a black journalist, Milton Coleman. He kind of looks like a fat Lou Gossett Jr. That's when Jesse Jackson said, Hi, me town, and you want to go there? And it didn't hurt Jesse Jackson's career. He is still a very popular speaker. He is still quoted on the news. But how about when Jesse Jackson was on Fox, and he was talking about Obama, and he said, I'd like to rip his balls off. He's talking down to niggas. And how about he said that, and guys like Sharpton came out and said, Hey, that's not the Jesse we know. And nobody vilified him for it. Mm -hmm. So this 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 punishment for the N word is bullshit, and it's arbitrary. And it all depends. Hold on. It, it, all it all depends. It all depends on what side of the fence you're standing on. Hooker from Jimi Hendrix from the Muddy Waters band. This guy's a thief. But you can't be in jail for his music. Ian, you can't allow your dislike of John Mayer's music. To, ca to actually come out and call the guy a, a racist. Supposedly, John Mayer's whole band is black, by the way. Saxophone around the world. Yeah. I played everywhere from Cape Town to London. To All right, Ian. Ian. So is he. I'll tell you one thing. Ian. From a musician standpoint, and you know this, Norton, when a comedian Ian. comes on and they don't have chops, your BS detector's high because you're a good comedian. Well, I can play music, man. This guy is stealing. Hold He's on. faking the funk. He's no James Brown. He's no Jimi Hendrix. This guy isn't even Ian. Lee Garrett. Ian. And I'm telling Ian. you right now, this guy should be boycotted. All right, Ian. Should never put out. All right, you, all again. right, Ian. Listen to me. Just ignore him. Ian, listen to me. You're all talk, though. You got that saxophone near you? No, I don't have it here. Ah, uh, conveniently, you don't have a saxophone nearby. You know, I, where are you right now in your house? Uh, I'm not going to tell you where I am, man. I go undercover. Right? <laughs> <laughs> undercover, that's it. Yeah. You that, well, you better I, prove I, your. You, you better prove your mu musical abilities right now, sir. Let me tell you something. My <laughs> idols were John Coltrane, Charlie right. Parker. Well, what Leslie could you give us? Young. Could you give us a little Who's something? For the room. What could you do right now to prove that you're a good musician? Ask me anything. I'll, I'll, no, you know, we want Charlie you to do something. Parker, Can you play spoons? Yeah. What could you do? What do you got? What, what do you want me? You want me to listen? Time is the essence, the essence of life. Time is the essence, the essence tonight. Amid visions of light, a long December night, hipster pants, magical mystery prints that dance. Oh my! See, that's my. I wrote that. 
Now, Ian, here, you talk about John Mayer being a racist. Here's what I think is a racist. Yes, it is talking. somebody that holds black and whites to different sets of standards when it comes to uh, yes. punishment for, for saying certain things. That, to me, is elitist and condescending and paternalistically racist. It, that, when you hold blacks to a different set of speech standards than you hold whites, that is parental. And that, to me, is very, very racist. Norton, let me tell you something. Norton. All due respect, you're talking from a Caucasian uh, pigmentation. Oh, well, well, so I'm are telling you. you right now, get so Reverend Al Sharpton on the line and ask him if this is acceptable. John Mayer using the Al Sharpton. What does Al Sharpton know? Al Sharpton's take what on does Sharpton know about Al that? Sharpton Ian. Right now, in front of Sirius Radio, <laughs> mobilizing everybody. And oh my God! Signs and boycott John Mayer. Ian, you have no idea. I want John Mayer Blacklist. <laughs> I'd love Sharpton to be in here. I'd like to ask some other questions first. Before I got to John Mayer, I'd like to cover the shit on Tawana Brawley and who paid Stephen Pagonis' family yeah. and a lot of other things that Mason I'd like to do. Maddox, two attorneys that were disbarred. Yes, his forgiveness of uh, of Jesse Jackson saying nigger but not Don Imus doing a joke. Mm. His forgiveness of Harry Reid saying that uh, Barack Obama didn't talk with a Negro dialect and yet crucifying Trent Lott. Like, I'd kind of like to, to, to hash that stuff out, out with Sharpton well, first. Betty Shabazz right now is turning over in her grave with these comments by John Mayer. I don't think Betty Shabazz cares what John yeah. Mayer said. Yeah. B Betty Shabazz was at least married to a very, very legitimate civil rights leader. She wasn't married to some fucking, some headline-grabbing whore who just harped on people's speech. Malcolm X was oh, a real you? guy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Mal I don't think Betty Shabazz would have cared about about the, the ramblings of a musician. Yeah, Ian, you're, you're way out of line on this one. So. Yeah. Way out well, of line. No, and, and you I, don't I, have any music talent because you can't prove it on the phone. No, I yeah. Think racism is like cancer again. You don't know when you have it. With Ian. all due respect. All right. all right, you heard that, Ian. You do know Ian. when you have it. Here, using the N word. All right. Any okay. African American activist, it's unacceptable. Ask any African American person breathing in this country. How about rappers? They will not accept it. The rappers, well, hey, you what? know. Wait. The rappers, they deserve their due, too. I mean, so, no, 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 no. How about punishment? How about, how about them being boycotted for using uh, the N-word? Yeah. Well, look, the bottom line is when you're from the hood, I agree. You could use certain words, but when you're a bit of you've got to show respect. Okay, so do you hold so you hold rappers and you don't, you don't fuck their women. Yeah. You know, you don't right, their wine, you don't steal their booze and you don't break into their bank account. And that's the bottom line. All right, so you hold blacks to a lower set of speech standards Whoa. and you hold whites. All right, that's hold, fine. Hold on. You know, I I might try to help you out a little bit cuz this is very interesting <laughs> or interesting. How would you say interesting? Ian. Interesting. Yeah, very good. <laughs> uh, Fabio in Oceanside. Fabio. Uh, Fabio. Hey, guys. Um, uh, yeah, you're right. Uh, Mayor is a ripoff because my body is in one land sounds just like Muddy Waters. Which Muddy Waters song? I know a little Muddy Waters. Uh, any of them. You know, Pine yeah. Top Perkins is a personal friend of mine. Who? The legendary Pine Top Perkins. I was performing in Austin, Texas. <laughs> Pine legend. Top Perkins of 94 came out to my gig. Pine Top Perkins. And I hung with him at B.B. King's in New York. Pine Top Perkins <laughs> will tell you right now, using the N-word from a, a punk like John Mayer, yeah. a guy who has no music. The fuck is whatsoever. Pine Top Perkins? I'll check to John Mayer's music. I'll tell you right now. I'll fuck to Muddy Waters. I'll fuck to Hendrix. I'll fuck I'd to... I never... Fu hey, well, hold on. How about... I ain't playing Mayer. Is it, isn't all along the Watchtower Bob Dylan song? Oh, shit. Yeah, what if the other guy doesn't like that music? Did he write Hey Joe? Is Hendrix doing? Hendrix ain't a thief. He's I'm not, not saying a he's a thief. a thief. He's just <laughs> paying respect to the great Bob Dylan <laughs> and acknowledging Dylan. Guy, Mayor, he comes <laughs> on as if he's why. invented the guitar right. and never pays homage to his predecessors. Do you think that Zeppelin, uh, in the blues Zeppelin are thieves? How come you're not attacking Led Zeppelin? Him too. How come you're not attacking Led Zeppelin? Well, hey, Jimmy Page, look, he's a fake. I have no respect for Jimmy Page. I'll <laughs> blow Page under the table any day of the week. Yeah? He, well, he probably, uh, you're all talk. That. You can't even prove that you're a musician. Look, dude, I'll come in with my band well, one day. Well, who's that guy Perkins that you're friends with? I'll, I'll sell more. When I, when I play a show, I sell 100 CDs minimum. 100 CDs. Mayor, if he plays next to me, well, he's selling listen, two CDs Ian, maximum. Ian, and it's only right, white supremacists. All right, all right, Ian, can you do us a favor? <laughs> can you call back maybe tomorrow with your saxophone and give us a little something? Cause I don't well, know, I'm, yeah. I'm on tour now. I don't have my sax. So with fucking me. buy a cheap one and get something done. Yeah, borrow one. The is 4000 bucks. All right. You, you can afford it. You got some yeah, best you know, I, I'm, I, You know, I'm a bit. I have the Jewish in me. I'm tight. Now, Rocco, I mean, Ian. My, dad, my family's from the hall. 
the Holocaust. Yeah. Right. You know, they hid in a cave yeah. for seven years. I am parting with my cash too quickly. Ian, so, all right, so you're not a musician. You know, why, I, I think we can accept John that. John wanted to get my money for Haiti. Yeah. And look, again, if Wyclef John would have gone up in that earthquake, I, I, I'd, I'd be I know, playing said that. I, I want to ask you about uh, Brad and Angelina now. They're suing that tabloid where? Overseas in London, I guess? Yeah, for the bullshit the world. For the bullshit rumor that they're breaking up. Are you a little nervous because you're all about these two breaking up? Well, I said 12 to 15 months, and I'll tell you one thing. I know the reporter very well who wrote the story. His name is James Desborough. Yeah. And uh, he's one of the finest reporters I've ever met. And anything that Desbro says, I've never seen him get egg on his face. And let's see how this plays out. You could sue anyone for anything. They're just trying to quiet down the storm. It's all smoke and mirrors. Let's see the end result at the end of the day. All right. So we got to wait a while. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, you know, I reserve judgment on this. All right. One, you and know. And you go. You still got to go in front of a magistrate and uh, and argue this out. Now, Charlie Sheehan, uh, one of his cars ends uh, ends up over the cliff there. You got anything on that? Well, you know that that morning, I have no idea where Jim Norton was because uh, Jim Norton took that car. Norton. And, uh, I don't know, man. A Mercedes Norton. Do you, what do you drive, Norton? I drive a BMW X6. In, in the spirit of a true gentleman, yet a younger man combined. <laughs> a, I should have. A, I should have on like. A, I should have on fingerless gloves and an ascot yes. because I'm all things together. What, what's the best car to pick up chicks in today? That's what I'm trying to figure out. A hearse. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right, but you know, I think Sheen might have orchestrated this whole thing for some crazy reason. And you know, that's just my BS detector going off here because Sheen, all these things just don't add up. Every day it seems to be something else happening. He gets arrested. Now he says he's going into rehab with this. How do you uh, calibrate that BS detector you know, with, with everything coming out of your mouth? <laughs> and the bottom line is, I, I think it's just getting too fishy. And I, 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 so you're again, saying I he got judgment he, on this one. I think it's going to play uh, out a bit, uh, and we're going to uh, find uh, out some uh, uh, details. You know what it is, Ian? It's like my good friend John Mayer says. I'm just waiting on the world to change. Yeah, hey, uh, Mayor, he stole all his lyrics. He stole all his riffs. Like, I don't believe that. No, we don't. Uh, believe absolutely, that. he's a thief. Although I he doesn't call our that. show anymore, I don't well, believe. I don't care. I still thief. like John a lot. I, I care. I, I wish he would call our if show. If he'd be alive, he'd be suing right, hey. uh, Mayor for plagiarism. All right, and 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 you're saying right here on our show, Charlie Sheen possibly uh, stole his own car or or had his I'm own just car saying stolen. It just because of your BS Charlie, detector. Charlie Sheen, he's a compulsive liar. We all know that. Really? He's a compulsive uh, drug addict. He's oh. a, I think he's a pathological liar. Really? This man is a basket case. He, him, too. I, I have no idea why they're paying him so much money to be on TV all the time. He marries a woman who, you know, who was pretty much giving it out for free on the corner of uh, Hollywood and Vine. I mean, uh, something's uh, up. What year is this? I mean, who hasn't? Hollywood and Vine. What was they giving a love potion number nine? Yes. Hey, Ian, we she got one. 23 skidoo. <laughs> Ian, we got one of those ends on the line. He wants to talk to you. Uh, Jay. Hey, Ian, man. What gives you the right to tell me as a black man I can't say nigga? Huh? What okay, gives you the right? Don't put words into my mouth, brother. Okay? And listen, take you a back seat right now. Because you haven't hung with the great Stokely Carmichael. You haven't hung with Ben Trap Brown. You haven't hung with the great Harry Edwards, Nelson Mandela. Nelson Mandela? You hung out with Nelson Mandela? He actually got him arrested. <laughs> oh, 20 years ago today, uh, he was freed, you know. 20 years ago today, and Winnie Mandela is marching the same walk when they got out of that prison. Oh, yeah, she wasn't too much of a treat, that woman. Wait, I want to hear Jay. He's losing his mind. Hold on. I want to hear Jay. He's losing his mind. Jay? Motherfucker, the only thing I hear this Canadian doing is dropping famous names of black people. That's it. I don't hear him actually... Uh, you know, do you have a job, else. sir? Don't put words in my mouth of a black man. If I want to call Anthony a racist fuck with plug hair, I can't. <laughs> Look, let me tell you hair. something. I'm dating okay. a hot white chick right now. I'm going to give you a night with her if you behave. So let me ask oh, you. Oh, damn. What a racist. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, motherfucker. If I behave, I'll give me a white girl. Fuck you. When was the last time you had white pussy, dude? You sound so fucking frustrated. You know, that's the bottom line. The interracial sex is the key here. And we all need to fuck different people from different uh, that's right. like, backgrounds. Like our listener for this call. Never fucked a white woman. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Kevin from Connecticut goes, you, you've never hung out with blind melon chitlin. <laughs> Someone else 
Sharpton to call in today oh. and let me know if the N word's acceptable. Yeah, you get him. On we'd the love phone. him. We'd love him to call. <laughs> you get him on the phone. No, he's a racist fuck too. Yeah. Maybe Rocco. Yeah. Maybe yeah. Rocco yeah. can get him. The great Al Sharpton. Because I'm going to put in a message to Sharpton today. I want a demonstration about mayor in front of the Playboy office. I want Playboy to get the message. Hugh Hefner, man. Why does he have only white women working in those bunny suits? How many black women has he had? Bunny sure, suits. he once paid Latoya Jackson eight million bucks. Yeah. You know, a one-shot deal. But I've been to the Playboy Mansion. I haven't seen anything darker than myself <laughs> in that house. And again, when's the last time Playboy been really relevant to a magazine as a skin mag anyway? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and it's his house. Stuff. He can invite over whoever the fuck he That's wants. Right. Absolutely. Maybe he got tired of the little rabbit ears being stolen. I don't see you with black broads, <laughs> Ian. Afraid, yeah. Hugh Hefner's afraid of people's Hands. I don't see That's you with black line. broads. Yeah, where are you with the black broads? Who in this studio right now has had sex with a black woman? I'm, ra I'm raising my hands and feet. <laughs> <laughs> what about Anthony? I know Anthony always. No, it was one of my. I like white women. I like white girls. You, with nice alabaster went, skin. Alabaster <laughs> skin! <laughs> no, why the hell am I going to do that? I don't find them attractive. Sorry. That's just, the way, that's just my personal taste. All right, listen. We got Don in Jersey. Everybody wants in. Don, go ahead. Make it fast because we got a lot of people that want Ian bad. Hey, man, the guy's the most famous musician since the history of the fucking world. Where's his CDs? Where's his book of Facebook, YouTube, anything? Yeah. Yeah, Ian. We want to see some oh, video. I'll come in with my band, and I'm going to fart you guys all. You have no fucking idea. Well, fucking get a saxophone. I want to hear what you can do. Hey, you'll be very shocked. You're, you're going to turn over. <laughs> oh, really? Have you ever played music, dude? Who, I, who am I talking to here? I... I Oh, Have well, you ever played more than a shoebox? <laughs> I've been in fucking bands my whole life, motherfucker. Yeah, sure you have. Oh, yeah? He's yeah. never been in a band. Yeah, I've right. been in bands my whole life. All right, let me go to Peter in Massachusetts. Peter, you're on with Ian Halpern, a.k.a. Tom Tom Perkins was a fucking junkie, and he sucks. He can't even play the fucking piano. <laughs> and you fucking suck, you white-hating fucking Jew bag. <laughs> hey, listen, man. Let me tell you something right now. <laughs> The state of Israel is about to descend on your house for saying that. Uh, you know, one thing. On your host. I'm telling you right now. Your host. Watch what you say in New York Jew about bag. Jews because Jews, you know, there's yeah. a lot of Jews what is roaming the Jew around. Bag? I, don't I don't get it. They, they don't take know. offense to this. They protect me. Yeah. All right. Well, Bert, a lot of anger. A lot of yeah. anger out there. Birdman, what's up? What's going on? Hey. hey who the fuck are you anyway? Who are you? Oh, do you play the meat flute? Yeah, you play the skin flute every night. Oh. Let me tell you something, brother. Did Let me tell you my something. Joke? <laughs> and listen to me. <laughs> yeah, you're the DJ. Yeah. You just stole his yeah, joke. He's stealing yeah. his joke. He's stealing his joke. Yeah. Hey, you're fucking me and Mayor, we're both thieves. Yeah. Huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you and him, Jim, Jim Mayor. What, what do you play, brother? Nothing. My Nothing? What do you do in life? Black off. That's what you're doing. I don't even know who you are. He sounds like red. I'm bored because I don't even know who you are. Oh, yeah? When was the last time you got laid? A long time ago. I'm married. He sounds like Jackie Mason and Red. Come on. You know, did you? I hope you don't have this douchebag. With this douchebag. All right, well. You're not making many friends or people that agree with you, Ian. Al Sharpton loves me today. Al Sharpton does not even know you. He doesn't know you. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I'm going to send you a photo of me and Al Sharpton. I got one of me and Al, too. I'll Twitter it. You want me to send it to you right now? I do. Yeah, guess what? Go ahead. Send it. Send the picture. Are you and Al Sharpton? Do the real Jim Norton at gmail.com. And what, okay, what were on. you doing? Hold on, folks. Let me get on my computer. Apologizing. Yeah. Wait, I'm let me get on my, my computer. Now. Are you homie in? Dude, I can't tell you where I am. Get your fucking saxophone and, and play us I'm something. Hold on a second. You say I've never met Al Sharpton. Yep. The great Al Sharpton. <laughs> Slick Willie loves him. What, where did you, uh, what was the circumstance no, of meeting? Know, you, you made a statement. That I've never met. Uh, all Sharpton. right, now I'm saying where no, did you, great. what was the circumstance? He finally can prove something. Yeah. Right. <laughs> he finally got something he can no, prove. He's all excited. 
Oh, that God. I have never met Al Sharpton. And what, what's that uh, email address, Mr. Norton? The real Jim Norton at gmail.com. All right, give me. All right, hold on a second here. I'm sending it right now. Well, I met the guy who stabbed him. How do you think? What do you think <laughs> about it? Hold on, gentlemen. He's a big fan of mine, Michael. He's a good boy. <laughs> hold on, here you go. I've never met Al Sharpton. Oh, here it is. You right. said it. And uh, give me this again. The real. Oh, my God. Jim Norton. At, at gmail.com. And right. if you're a woman with a big clit, feel free to send that as well. <laughs> All right, here you go, brother. Check your email. Okay, I can't right, right now because I'm on the radio. Order, right now, minute. my brother. Hold on. It takes a minute to go through. Gmail is very slow sometimes. Yeah. And all you're screaming at me. I'm a sweet boy. Uh, well, uh, well, right I'm... now, check my. <laughs> <laughs> We're waiting for it to come in. I want to hear a machine gun at Norton Speed right now. Do you have a machine gun effect? And start dancing, dude. Hold on, I'm, not, I'm actually, I'm, I'm turning my uh, Gmail on. Yeah. I'm on my iPhone. Uh, let's say hi to Russ in Kansas City as we wait for the email there, Ian. Russ, yeah. what do you got? Man, it's amazing. You got a fucking reporter who's got short-term memory. But what? Here's what I want to know: How do you keep having this fucking? Snooty ass cocksucker Canadian, and he's done everything, and pretty soon he's gonna find Amelia Earhart. What kind of bullshit is this? <laughs> I fucked with Amelia Earhart. Google it, Google it. We, yeah, Google it. Mile yeah. High Club, I was fucking her, and the plane uh, petered out. I jumped out with a parachute, and she died. Oh, oh the guy just snooty any American. I want Google you to come it. up to Canada. Who is on Huh? Uh, I want you to come up to Canada. I'll put you in the woods and let's see if you can find your way out. Oh, <laughs> what what kind of challenge is that? I'd use a yeah, Jeep, I'd use GPS. You know, the satellites that America put up yeah, so everyone person? could use them? You know, the satellites America put up so all the world could use GPS? I would just use that. Proud American. Stupid Canadian. <laughs> Jimmy, what do you got? The picture's very you slow down, though. Don't me. You get my leftovers, dude. You, you think I give a fly and fuck Language. who you've, you've said you fucked? Language. Show me that picture. You got it? No, it's very slow. <laughs> Dude, what type of what type of internet line does Sirius have there? I mean, no, it's on my it's on my iPhone. I see uh, a picture of Sharpton, but I can't see who's with him. So far, we can't see if it's you. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, I hear you now. I can't see who that is. Oh, give me give me another. No, I don't see it either. It, yeah, we it, don't see it. Either. It's a guy uh, with a white tie. There you go. I cannot. I I can't verify that's you. It, and look who's below me. Look who I'm with below. In the next photo. It looks like a picture of Dice and Jesse Jackson. <laughs> but so what? Dude, <laughs> dude, I have a picture of Sharpton. Yeah. yeah well, you know, hold on. You guys made a statement. I want an apology right now or I might sue. Because you said <laughs> I never met Sharpton. I never said you never met Sharpton. Yeah, we didn't well, say that. Well, you insinuated. No, no, no one said that. You said, oh, you met Sharpton. Yeah, what are you doing? You listen to the show so? every time I'm on. I don't believe if that you're a good uh, musician. That's all. That's where I'm at. Yeah. yeah. You said you didn't believe I was with Sharpton. I didn't if say. You apologize to John Mayer. We'll apologize yeah, to you. Yeah, let's do that. I want an apology. Well, let's... if you apologize to I John. Will, I will not apologize to blatant racist. Blatant. Uh, Why? Blatant you... racist. Well, that's what Sharpton not is. It's not to use the N-word. I think Ian, should boycott Mayer, boycott Playboy. Ian, you got everyone excited today. Could you, could you at least apologize for something today? Yeah. For something. You insulted John on a personal level. You That's apologize not nice. for something, and if the uh, apology, apologize, hold on, if the apology is, I apologize, if I apologize for calling Jesse Jesse Jackass because I actually don't mind Jesse Jackson. Yeah, that's not the apology I was looking for. Yeah, no, that's too easy. Yeah, you should apologize to John. Yeah. Uh, look, put <laughs> Mayor and I on a stage any day of the week. You'll oh, yeah. forget the name John Mayor. I'm telling you now. Well, even if they oh, like really? you more, they still remember they, his name. It's easy you, to remember. You think? You wouldn't get booed and have stuff thrown at you on a stage that Dude, you shared with deal. John Mayer. I can deal. Mayer's a fake. He's a phony. I've played with the great Pine Top Perkins. <laughs> I've played with the top musicians from South Wait, name Africa. some of these musicians that you've played with. Yeah, who's Pine Hat Perkins? Yeah, yeah what the fuck is Pine that? Pine Top Perkins? Yeah. What the hell is he? Water's keyboard player. All right, what else? Who else? He's still gigging. He's 96 years old. He does 150 gigs a year. That's racist. Oh, gigs. Oh, oh gigs. Spell <laughs> 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 that. Ian, that's the uh, only musician you know. Dude, you know, I, I'm not going to flip my deck here. I, I, I'll shut you up when I come in and play. You guys are going to be... All right, when is, I, when, is the big, uh, when is the big showdown coming? 
When are you coming in with your saxophone? Well, I've got to finish up some business here, but I'll be there in the next few weeks. I'll bring in a little right. quartet with me. All right, let's do we'll, that. We'll entertain Norton. You know, make sure you have a chick there, Norton, because when I play steamy sax, man, you know, I don't want you <laughs> oh, to yeah. Google it. Google the whole time we've been talking, I've been cutting spoiled meat farts. Oh, they're so oh, yeah. bad. I just thought that was Jennifer Aniston's pussy. I didn't know the difference. Right, Ian? Right, Ian? And Aniston, All right. you know, I'm going to find out. I'm going to get to the bottom of it. All right, good. All right. Ian, it's always a pleasure, I think. Yes. It, Peace out, bro. See you, man. All right, Love Ian Halperin. Halperin.